everyone welcome back to my youtube channel trouble free in today's video we are going to learn about the data sufficiency questions that means how to answer those questions in infosys exam so whenever you face these kind of questions first you have to get a clarity of options you'll be given two statements first right each of the questions below contains of a question and two no uh, statement numbers one and two so you'll give you'll be given a question and below that question you'll give to, you'll be given two statements and you should decide whether statement one or statement two or both together or both of them together will not be sufficient so you have to determine with by using statement one or by using statement two how you arrive at the answer that is what you have to determine you'll have four options in total mark one as the answer if the question is answered by using one of the statements alone but cannot be answered using the other statement alone that means you should be able to answer the question either with statement one or with statement two right if you are using statement one then you cannot use statement two if you are using statement two then you cannot use statement one in that cases you can you have to mark one Mark 2 as the answer if the question can be answered by either statement alone. That means, see, what is the difference between option 1 and option 2 is? In option 2, you can take any of the statement. That means, both from both the statements, you can arrive at the answer by using any of the statement. But in option 1, you cannot arrive at the answer by using either of the, one st either of the two statements, right? You have to use any one among those two. Right and uh, option three says the question can be answered by you, uh, both statements together. That means you have to combine both the statements in order to get the answer. Then you have to go with third option. Mark four as the answer if the question cannot be answered even by using. So even if you combine those state two statements together, also you cannot get the answer. In that case, you have to go with four. Okay, so first try to understand the options clearly. And now let's see some of the example problems. Uh, by which uh, we can like you know uh, previously asked questions and all so that you can get a clarity of what kind of questions will be asked in Infosys and how to uh, you know cope up with those questions so let's uh, now get started with the example problems first so let's see the examples and see data sufficiency is one of the most confusing part uh, because you know uh, you'll be feeling like the options are very confusing first of all so I'll try to explain some examples we are going to discuss totally of five examples in this video and some more examples I'll be explaining in the later part of the video so now uh, let's get started first the question is is x is equal to 3 so you have to predict whether x is equal to 3 see the answer can be anything the answer can be yes or no it is not mandatory that you should get only yes the answer can be yes or no you can get anything out of yes or no so the first thing that you have to find out is whether x is equal to 3 or not and that you have to determine whether you'll be getting it by using only statement 1 or only statement 2 or by using both. See from statement 1 where x square is equal to 9 from this you can get x is equal to 3 but along with getting x is equal to 3 you will get x is equal to plus 3 as well as minus 3 also because minus 3 whole square is also 9 right so when x square is equal to 9 you will be getting x as plus 3 and also minus 3 right so now uh, you you're not sure about the answer whether x is equal to 3 or not right so the second statement says x is less than 0 so if x is less than 0 x can be anything x can be minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 minus 4 anything right so using statement 1 alone you got the answer as plus or minus 3 using statement 2 alone you're getting the answer as minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 minus 4 and so on so uh, by using either of these statements you cannot get the answer right so the option a is gone option b is also gone we have c and d right option a says uh, using any one statement you will get the answer and the other statement will not help you to get the answer right so a is gone b either of the two statements will give you an answer right so this also gone you have c or d what does option c says both of them are required see here in this case you got plus or minus 3 and if you combine this condition also to this you can directly say that the answer is minus 3 right because here you have negative numbers so out of these negative numbers here you have two options 3 minus 3 
So among 3 and minus 3, which is there in the second condition, minus 3 is there. So the x value is minus 3. So the answer is no, right? So you, be, you are able to predict the answer as no by using both these statements. So that is the reason why you will be getting the answer as C. Because you should use these both statements in order to get the answer, right? So it's not mandatory that whether you're getting the correct answer or not, right? You should be able to determine whether you can get the answer with the given statements or not right that, that is what data sufficiency means whether the data is sufficient or not right so now let's look at the other example in question number two we have is x cube greater than x square here also you should determine whether you will be getting yes or no okay so you should determine whether you get yes or no right you have to determine the answer so now let us see the statement one says x is greater than zero right see if x is greater than zero also again you have two cases here so what are those two cases case one will be uh, x lies between zero and one and case two will be x is greater than one right because uh, for zero and one values will be diff uh, between the numbers between the zero and one are nothing but the decimals right so for the decimals the value will be different and here the value will be different so let us check in this case what happens uh, from 0 to 1 let us check a, take a number 1 by 2 so 1 by 2 whole cube and 1 by 2 whole square x cube x square right so 1 by 2 whole cube will give you 1 by 8 and 1 by 2 whole square will give you 1 by 4 where 1 by 8 is less than 1 by 4 which means x cube is less than x square so this statement is becoming no here right so false it is becoming no right and in second case let's see what happens in second case let us take x is equal to 2 so 2 cube and 2 square 8 and 4 you'll get 8 is greater than 4 right so here you're getting yes so in one case in the same statement for one case you are getting no for the other case you are getting yes which means that you cannot predict the correct output you cannot predict the correct value right are you able to understand what i'm saying see you cannot predict the exact answer because one case you are getting no, one case you are getting yes. So, statement 1 will not be sufficient to get the answer. Okay. And the second case says x is less than 1. So, uh, in again in x is less than 1 all cases also we have another like 0 is less than x is less than 1. The numbers between 0 and 1. Sorry, we have three cases here. X is equal to zero case we have and X is less than zero case we have. So out of these three cases, for this, the answer is no. We already got this here, right? The same case. So the answer is no. And for X is equal to zero, zero cube, zero square. Zero cube is zero, zero square is also zero. Both of them are equal. But what is given in the question? X cube is greater than X square. That is again no here also. In this case also, you're getting the answer as no. For X is less than zero case, let us check. Let us take x is equal to minus 1. Minus 1 is less than 0, right? So, minus 1 whole cube and minus 1 whole square. Minus 1 whole cube is minus 1 and minus 1 whole square is plus 1. So, out of minus 1 and plus 1, 1 is only greater. So, you will get minus 1 is less than 1, which means x cube is less than x square. But what is there in the question? x square is greater than x, uh, sorry, x cube is greater than x square, right? So, for this also, you will be getting no as the answer. So, unanimously, you got no for all the cases, right? No, 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 right? You got no for all the cases. So, that is the reason why you can answer the statement by using, uh, sorry, you can answer the question by using only statement 2 and the answer that you are going to get is no, right? So, here, statement 1 is of no use, right? You can get answer only by using statement 2. Statement 1 is of no use. That is what means the option A, right? Only one statement will be enough and the other statement has no use to do, right? That is what option 1 means. So, the option will be A for this question, okay? Now, question number 3. How many liters of mango juice can 375 mango trees produce is what the question says. So, uh, normally before going into the statements, let us first try to figure out what are the things that are required to calculate how many liters of mango juice uh, 375 mango trees can produce first we have to find out how many fruits from each mango tree we will get so each tree will give how many fruits and how many fruits and each fruit will give how much of juice that is what we have to know right 
so these are the things which are required to get the answer for this particular question so now let us see in the question what are given sorry in the statements each tree produces 400 mangoes is what given so how many fruits are there okay that is what we got done and but but by using only statement one can you determine how many uh, like how many liters of, of juice can be produced no right because here you know only how many fruits are there but you don't know how many liters individual fruit will give right so statement one alone will not be sufficient to get the answer right and the second say, statement says each mango can give a cup of mango juice so here in this statement we got each fruit will give how much amount of juice we got here in this statement so if you combine this statement also we will be getting the answer is what you guys will be thinking but see if you observe the question key i mean you know clearly he says each mango will give a cup of mango juice he did not mention each cup will give a liter of mango juice what is that you're supposed to find out you have to find out how many liters right so you don't know whether one cup is equal to one liter or half a liter or quarter of a liter or two liters you don't know that so even by using statement two also you cannot get the answer so you have to get you uh, i mean an additional quantity you should have with you that is how many cups will make up a liter right or one cup contains how many liters that is what you have to know you don't know that so by using both the statement also you cannot arrive at the answer which means the option would be option four that means both statements combined also will not be enough will not be sufficient to answer the given question okay so this is about the third question now let's try to understand the fourth question and also fifth the fourth question says three consecutive integers a b c consecutive integers means which will be next to each other in any order that means it's not mandatory that a next b next c it's not like that it can be a b c b c a c a b anything it can be right in any order and among these three numbers which is the highest number you have to predict okay so uh, let us see whether uh, let us uh, look into these statements and let's see whether we can figure out the answers using the statements or not see in statement 1 it says average of a and b is c which means c is equal to a plus b by 2 right average simply means that this c number will lie somewhere around between a and b so it lies between a and b so you cannot predict that c is greater by using this statement right so c is obviously not the greatest number right a or b something should be greater right but we are not sure whether a is greater or b is greater from statement 1 so that is the reason why statement 1 alone will not be sufficient to get the answer right next number a is greater than number b number a is greater than number b means a is greater than b is what we get from the statement 2 but here we don't know what about c whether c is between um, a and b or c is greater than a c is less than b we don't know anything about c right so uh, as we cannot predict anything about c by using statement 2 so statement 2 alone also will not be sufficient to get the answer so obviously in this case what you have to do you have to combine these two what happens if you combine these two let us see what we are get, what will get if you combine so on combining two statements what we will get is we will get a is greater than b and we will also get to know that a lies somewhere around uh sorry c lies somewhere around a and b so obviously c is not greater than a right so it is somewhere around uh, a and b so obviously a will be the greatest number then right so this you got by using both the statements right so this answer you are able to predict by combining both the answers so that is the reason why the answer will be c for this because you are able to arrive at the answer only by combining both the uh, statements right so the answer will be c for this right now let us see one more last question for this video this question is a bit lengthy lengthier question to see and also to solve uh, and a bit uh, you know trickier also so let's see how to solve this iron steel aluminum and lead are melted in the ratio of 9 is to 6 is to 4 is to 2 to form a substance okay iron cost rupees 20 per kilogram and what is the cost of 1 kilogram of steel that is what you have to find out okay 1 kilogram cost of iron is given and what is the cost of 1 kilogram of steel is also given 
and the cost of the alloy is 160 per kilogram and cost per kilogram of aluminium and steel are same see one thing the ratios are given so it's obvious that you will be taking um, the ratios as 9x 6x 4x 2x and you know iron cost to 20 rupees per kilogram so what is the ratio of iron 9x so 9x is equal to 20 and you will find the value of x and you will substitute the value of x in that and you will get the cost of steel you may do the problem in that way see the what is that you have to do here your target is not to get the answer you have to determine whether you can get the answer or not see it's very uh, like you know i mean very easy he said to form a substance right he did not say that you can form an alloy so considering statement one which says the cost of alloy is 160 per kilogram yes of course he gave the cost of an alloy but he did not give you what is the cost like how whether the substance will form an alloy or not right that means whether you, you it's not given whether the substance is being measured in uh, kilograms or not right so that is the reason why you cannot just simply determine whether uh, sorry you cannot just simply determine it by using statement one okay and if you consider statement two he says the cost per kilogram of aluminium and steel are same but he did not tell you what is the value he just gave you he just told you that both of them are same but he did not give you the value right so here you cannot even use statement two also even though if you combine them also see what happens here you are given the value in terms of kilogram right but here you are given the value as a substance here also you are given the value of kilogram but it does not mention whether the substance is in kilograms or whether is it in whether it is in pounds or anything it is not mentioned right so you cannot predict anything about the answer just by using the book even by combining both the statements also right that is why you arrive at the option four which means both combined also will not be sufficient to get the answer because the units are not matching in both the cases right so whatever the unit is given in the question is not matching with the uh, unit which is given in the uh, both the statements so you cannot say anything so that's all for this video i have explained five examples and that's all if you have still any doubts let me know in the comment section i tried my best to uh, explain it in a better way for you but still if you're not able to understand let me know in the comment section and also subscribe to my channel if you have not yet done and also share it with your friends so that it will be useful for them as well and if you have understood clearly whatever i explained in the video hit the like button and also stay tuned to my channel subscribe hit the subscribe uh, icon and also click on the bell icon so that you can receive the notifications whenever i post a video and that's all for this video let's meet up soon in the next coming video with another topic and also let me know in the comment section what is the next video that i have to make so that i will be able to uh, prioritize my videos okay and that's all let's meet up soon in the next video